Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Well, there's been a lot of videos here kicking around in the YouTuberverse about what people perceive to be traps in various pieces of legislation or ATF rulemaking orders. But I think we may have come upon a big trap that exists for real and we'll actually prove it to you today as it relates to the proposed assault weapon ban that is kicking around in your state legislature right now as we speak. So today, I want to get all my Washington residents really up to speed about something that I think is very important. So today, let's spend a few minutes and talk about the very real trap that is being set in Washington's assault weapon ban. Okay, so the issue we are talking about today is multiple House and Senate bills, but it all relates to a proposed ban on semi-automatic rifles here in the state of Washington, or what the state legislature now wants to call assault weapons. Now, there has been a lot of confusion about how many bills are kicking around, and I think that confusion is part of the design by the people who are advancing this legislative scheme here. So I want to get you all up to speed on what we're talking about and what else is kicking out there first. All of the bills that I'm about to mention all deal with banning of assault weapons here in the state of Washington. They have different bill numbers. They seem to be all very similar, but you need to be aware of all of them, okay? House Bill 1180 has a companion Senate bill of 5193. And if you look at the text of both of those bills, that's 1180 in the House, 5193 in the Senate, they are identical. Now, in addition to that, there is House Bill 1240, which is the one we're going to be talking about today. That has a companion Senate bill of 5265. So 180 matches up with 5193, 1240 matches up with 5265. What I want to talk to you about today is House Bill 1240 because this bill had public testimony heard on it back on January 17th before the House. We highlighted some of that testimony right here in this video. Now, once that public testimony was done, this bill went into executive committee and what has come out of executive committee is something you all need to be aware of. Now, I'm just going to preface all of this right now. If ever you had thought about maybe getting into the semi-automatic rifle platform, if maybe you'd ever thought about, you know, I've thought about maybe buying myself an AR2, I would suggest that right now is perhaps the best time ever to do so. And if you are in fact looking at getting into this particular platform, or if you're looking to stock up on a platform that you're very familiar with already, we will be doing another video that I think you're going to be really interested to in know about how to do everything in a legal manner, but to leave the least amount of data out there to make those firearms traceable. Not like we would ever want to do that, right? No, who's after these guns at all? But this is the thing I want you to understand about House Bill 1240, okay? And this is the trap that's being set. And there is a huge trap here. Because when it goes into executive committee, every bill gets a bill analysis, okay? And a bill analysis is a quick little four-page summary. And really, I think it helps a lot of legislators who don't want to sit down and actually read the entire piece of legislation. So it gives a quick update on what the current state of the law is and what the new law would do. What it also does is it talks about fiscal notes. Fiscal notes are the financial impact that this will have on the state if this is enacted into legislation. And then the final thing, and you don't find this in the original bill, but they tell us what the effective date would be. And this is what I want you all to be really, really cognizant of, okay? Because as you can see right here, according to the House bill analysis, Effective date. The bill contains an emergency clause and takes effect immediately. So unlike the magazine ban, which was signed into legislation in like April, but never went into effect until July, if this bill becomes reality, the minute your governor signs it, the minute your governor signs it, it becomes effective law. And if you don't think that things can happen this fast, all you need to do is look no further 
than Illinois because we have done a series of videos about what happened in Illinois and how they took a bill that was nothing more than a piece of insurance regulation, completely rewrote it, ran it through both houses to the governor's desk and signed it into law in less than 72 hours with no grandfathering clause whatsoever. So this is a reality. This is a game plan that we are beginning to see from some of the more extreme gun grabbing legislators. And let us remember that in the state of Washington, we have not really come up with an original idea yet. Our governor and our attorney general is essentially like copycat killers. They take a look at what other people are doing in other states and then they try to do it here. This rapid fashion in which Illinois banned these weapons is a playbook that would not shock me if Governor Inslee and Attorney General Ferguson have taken a page out of. We need to be very, very careful. The House bill again is House Bill 1240. It's already had public testimony. It's already an executive session. It's gonna come out of that executive session with the recommendation to pass. It's gonna be um, voted upon upon party lines, four to pass, two to reject. It's going to go to the House. It's going to be read. There could be a vote on this bill. And understand that if it passes out of both chambers, the minute the governor signs it, this will become legislation that is in effect at that exact moment. That, my friends, is a real trap, a real trap that we can show you objectively from the legislature itself and it's something that all of you need to be aware of, if by chance you have ever thought about dipping your toes into the AR waters, now might be the time to do that. Finally, many of you always ask, what can I do about it? We're gonna put all the links in the description box down below so you can find your district, find your legislator, contact them, and we're also gonna put descriptions for the totally awesome Legislative Action Center from the Conservative Ladies of Washington. I encourage all of you to sign up for that as well. In the meantime, if you have any questions about House Bill 1240 or anything else related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights, you guys know the drill. You can always contact us at WashingtonGunLaw.com or you can call us directly at 425-765-0487. Now in the meantime, let's remember, Part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Law, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay safe.